So good day, Loras. Uh, this is Maji Johari. I'm a member of Parliament for Richmond Hill, and today I have the um, honor of uh, having Loras Horanda, the Executive Director of Yellow Brick House, with me. Welcome to our office. Thank you very much. It's good to have you here. Um, uh, quickly, can you tell us uh, what uh, Yellow Brick House is all about, and what is your role? Absolutely. So I'm the Executive Director of Yellow Brick House. I've been there for 16 years, not quite a, a, a long time. Uh, Yellow Brick House has been in existence for 41 years, though, and our, we provide services to abused women and children in York Region. What kind of trend have you seen um, prior to COVID-19? So let's talk about what had happened in the past. What kind of trend you've seen, and uh, how has that trend has changed during the COVID? Well, uh, we know that uh, domestic violence is still a very prevalent issue in Canada where one in five women uh, live in violent homes with their children. And even before COVID-19, we, we struggled with keeping up with the demand. But since COVID-19, we've actually seen an increase of 30% in reported uh, cases of domestic violence. Okay. And this is just as a result of, uh, you know, uh, social distancing and then being more at home. Yes. Uh, what, had it, any indicated into the nature of these violence? Well, um, Women being more isolated at home because of COVID-19 were uh, not at liberty to reach out for help, uh, especially with their perpetrators being at home with them. They didn't have access to phones, perhaps, to, to text the crisis line or to call the crisis line. Uh, they were also being told that uh, services are closed or that services are not available or that, that the shelters are closed because of COVID-19 uh, virus that spread to shelters, which is not true. Uh, so we actually did a pretty active social media campaign in the months of June and July to reach out to our community um, in different languages to really let them know that our services are open, that we're COVID-19 safe. And after we um, the social media blast, we've seen an incredible increase in calls to our crisis line. So mm -hmm. women are reaching out for help when they're possibly able to do so. So there's definitely a lot of need in our community and in you know, broader York region to, to provide that kind of support. Absolutely. We've noticed that in the first uh, six months or five months of this uh, fiscal year, we have actually served more women and children than we did in the same period last year. And uh, we, we, we haven't stopped our intake. We are we're getting the support of both the provincial and federal government to enable us to take as many intakes as we possibly can. You, you talked about various levels of government. Um, I, under, I understand that under your leadership, um, Yellow Brick House really put itself on the map in, in its collaboration with various levels of government, not only to generate awareness, but also seek their support and mobilize the supports that need it. Can you share some of those uh, successes that you've had? Absolutely. I think that we can't work in isolation. So uh, collaboration with our community partners, with our municipal, provincial and federal government is essential because we have to focus on the best outcomes for the families that we serve. And the, the one way to do that is really to reach out to all our supporters and leaders in our community at all government levels and community partners to have conversations about what is it that we need uh, and how can we improve our services and improve our reach to families that are vulnerable and are needing the support of our community. Yeah, talking about the federal government, and actually as a member of parliament for Richmond, I'm honored to not only represent the community, but also represent amazing organizations such as your organization um, uh, federally. Can you share with us some of the key projects that uh, has really been able to help uh, the um, vulnerable, most vulnerable, um, uh, in our community under um, uh, under the various program at the uh, Yellow Brick House? Absolutely. So um, at Yellow Brick House, we provide our array of services uh, to assist families in need. So, of course, we're probably best known for our emergency shelters, offering 51 beds and cribs to families who are fleeing violent homes. It is a matter of survival. It is not something that uh, we take very lightly, and we try our best to ensure that these families are safe and secure when they come to us. But that's just the beginning of the journey. These families also need uh, support through counseling, either individual counseling for women and children, group support, and connections with community resources. So, you know, women who are looking to 
uh, find a job and or upgrade their skills because now they have to provide for themselves and for their children uh, without much support from the perpetrators because as we all know the court system takes quite a long time to resolve and any uh, financial aid that the woman can expect to receive from the father of the children is sometimes delayed by years. Um, we are also very proud of the fact uh, that we have invested on a smaller scale, uh, best of our abilities up to this point, in prevention programs. Because the key to ending domestic violence is education. And we're very um, proud and, and uh, appreciative of the support of our uh, federal government who has recognized that we want to increase our sustainability and invest in programs that will deal with prevention of domestic violence and gender-based violence. Great. Um, one of the programs that I'm sure you're quite proud of, and um, I take pride in making sure that I work very closely with you to make sure that we get it, is the project that you call Strategic Philanthropy under the Capacity Building uh, Call for uh, Proposals. And this is a program that actually started last year, as you and I worked on that, and now it's coming to fruition. Can you can you tell us what the program, uh, what the project is all about, and where it is, and how various people, aside from the government, can can help into that? Absolutely. Um, that is just a perfect example of the support that we are getting from the government in Canada um, in terms of recognizing where our vision lies. Our vision at Yellow Brick House is freedom from violence and equity for all. And one way to achieve that is not only to provide the intervention services, as I mentioned earlier, but also to invest deeply into prevention programs. In order to do that, we need to actually increase our organizational capacity. And one way to do that is to have a, a long-term strategic philanthropy plan that's going to address all our stakeholders, our board members, our staff, our clients, our donors, our politicians, and other community and corporate leaders uh, who contribute to supporting our cause. And one way to do that, of course, is to strategically assess uh, what is our um, culture of philanthropy in our community. It's to assess what is our fundraising benchmark compared to other organizations across Ontario. Uh, and it also is to look at what is our communication and marketing strategy. And using these four components, these pillars, developed a strategic philanthropy plan that will increase our sustainability, it will increase our ability to either raise or earn the dollars that we need to grow our programs and to invest deeply into prevention programs. Yeah, you, you mentioned cultural philanthropy as your first pillar in there. Mm -hmm. Tell me, uh, th this is very interesting, I mean, we understand culture and we understand philanthropy, but when you bring the culture of philanthropy within a community and an assessment and benchmarking, uh, those are the words that not everybody is probably accustomed to. What is it in basic, let's say, magic language, what that means? You know, and a lot of people, when, when we talk about fundraising, people think it's about, oh no, here she comes, she's asking for another dollar, she's asking for grant money. But it's really looking into what is it, as individuals, as, as a culture, as a society, what is it important to us? And what, uh, as stakeholders, you know, what do we need to do to invest into improving the life in Canada. That is the big term. Um, we know that there's so much research that's been done in terms of when we talk about the rape culture, you know, the, the buzzwords in social media and what that means. And you look at some of the statistics, they're, they're staggering, you know, where um, it's indicated that 51% of uh, male college students, for example, would rape a, a woman if they thought they would get away with it. That culture needs to shift. And one way, so addressing it through strategic philanthropy is addressing not just the, the financial piece of it, but also the educational piece of it and awareness piece of it. Yeah. Um, so I guess when we talk about the culture of philanthropy, I look at it in a very, very simple form. Um, my daughter or my son could be sitting beside in their classroom, in, in their peer work, could be working or sitting beside an individual. Uh, or somebody else's son or daughter who um, is coming from a home that you know it's uh, there's violence in it and they're dealing with their their mom and, you know um, going to whatever the case may be and just raising that awareness and making sure that 
when you give, you're giving to make sure that we live in a better society. And we give those who um, have that opportunity, who don't have the opportunity that we have, uh, the chance to be able to get back in and, you know, um, um, benefit from it and make sure that they succeed in life. A um, couple other things, closing with, uh, there's a number of other programs that uh, um, your organization, Yellow Brick House, has been qualified, all with the focus of Again, generating that awareness and bringing uh, um, bringing uh, clear focus on where the issues in our society, is, especially uh, violence against women and gender equality. Um, Canada Summer Job is one of those. Uh, you, you have a number of uh, uh, students that you brought over a number of years, at least the last six years that we've been yes. working together. Uh, you just touch on that, of what are these students are actually focusing on? Absolutely. We've, we've been uh, extremely uh, fortunate to, to benefit from utilizing students uh, during the summertime and they've been fantastic. Mm -hmm. our, our, our young generation, is, those are our future leaders and to have them so passionately involved uh, with Yellow Brick House mm -hmm. uh, providing a variety of services. Some of them are focusing on our social media campaigns. Some of them are social, uh, focusing on social media campaigns directed at youth only because we're trying to get youth engaged in this conversation about violence and domestic violence and gender equality and uh, to see the passion that uh, they are experiencing when they're introduced to the Yellow Brick House and they, they're engaged with us. These are our future supporters. Mm -hmm. Talking about the culture of philanthropy, it's the awareness piece. Um, we have them working on marketing strategies for us, uh, providing some administrative support for us, uh, doing some research uh, where we get the data that support our conversations in uh, raising that awareness. So uh, we've been so extremely fortunate mm -hmm. to have such a talented group of students mm -hmm. involved with us this summer. And, yeah. and you, you provide them with an amazing opportunity to be able to almost uh, uh, break into any field that they're interested with a clear focus on on the community and vulnerable uh, uh, sector within 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 our demographic. Um, uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank your organization. I want to um, thank the staff. And I know you have a lot of volunteers uh, that they come in and help. Um, um, you know, just making sure that uh, there is a venue for. Our most vulnerable. Okay, thank you, Laris. Really you. appreciate that honor to have you in our office. Thank you.